Let me get back to the phones. As promised, Jacksonville, Florida. Bobby, great to have you on the EIB Network. Hello. Hey, Rush. Good afternoon. Great to have you, sure. Bobby. Thank you. Just, uh, you know, listening to you in the, in the media saying that for eight years they told us that the, uh, the new norm was like a half a percent or one percent GDP. Unemployment was supposed to uh, go up. Food stamp. More people are on food stamps. For eight years we heard about it. Now Trump is in there for one year and the economy is booming. How can they po- – I can't figure out the media. What do they want us to believe? What does the media want you to believe? Right. I, the media don't... doesn't want you to know. The media is trying to hide this booming economy. They think they can by not reporting it. And despite the fact that people are living it, I wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of people that watch CNN or MSNBC or read the New York Times, I think there's, I think those are some of the most closed-minded and narrow-minded and ill-educated people in our country. People who only know what the drive-by media tells them. They could be having the greatest economic year of their lives. And if the New York Times or CNN tells them the economy's in the tank, they'll probably believe it. They will say, well, that's too bad. Things are going well for me, but maybe everybody else might be in big trouble. And they'll start feeling bad and so forth. They believe what they're told. And so that segment of the population that watches the drive-by media, and they're covering it up. Grab audio soundbite number four. Hopefully the whole thing will play. This is Stuart Varney, Fox and Friends Today. He was talking to Ainsley Earhart about the stock market. She said, boy, it's a big day on Wall Street. Tell us why, Stuart. This is an explosive day. Sit back and watch history. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will hit 26,000. It was only seven trading sessions ago that we hit 25,000 because it's the Trump rally. Anything positive for President Trump, whether it's the economy or anything, does not get coverage. It is historic and it is inexplicable that I'm not seeing this on the front page of major newspapers or at the top of every newscast on media outlets. But we're not. They're ignoring it. Totally. By design and on purpose. And by not reporting it and ignoring it, they don't want the people that watch them or read them to know that it's happening. And they think that they can prevent these people from discovering that there's an economic boom. And sadly, they may be right because of the closed-minded, small-minded nature of their, their audience. But then they do break from it now and again, and they do try to credit Obama. As this next soundbite illustrates, this is Christine Romans on CNN this morning, talking about the Dow Jones Industrial Average hitting 26,000. A record high for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And this is pretty remarkable, these milestones. It took about two years to get from 18,000 to 19,000, and then there was the election. And since then, look, one after another, the economy is strong. This is almost a nine-year-old bull market. This is an old bull, but it has really been uh, paying off for investors. So a growing economy, a stock market that's doing very well here, um, nine years, really, of expansion and a stock market rallying in 26,000. I can tell you that since the election, the Dow is up 40%. Since the election, the S&P 500 is up 30%. That is an incredible, incredible return. Right. Since the election. Not since Donald Trump began implementing economic policy. Not since Donald Trump began deregulating the American economy and stripping a bunch of Obama obstacles out of it and nine year bull market let me tell you what was going on here folks that nine year bull market is an attempt to credit obama for this the stock market was booming during obama because they were printing money the federal i'm sorry to be shouting here but this stuff gets me rattled They were printing money. The Federal Reserve, quantitative easing is what it was called. And they were printing money and they were giving it to people that would then invest it and buy securities with it, showing a growing stock market. The truth of the matter is that this is just the beginning of a big, big boom because the last eight years, the eight years of Obama, we were stuck in neutral. And in, in many ways, the economy, the overall economy, not just Wall Street, the overall economy was stagnant or going backwards. 
unemployment was uh, was was said to be coming down, but the labor for- force participation rate was getting smaller. More and more people out of the workplace, and they were telling us that America's best days are behind us. They were telling us that this is the new era of decline and that Obama and the Democrats were the masters at managing the decline to make it fair and equitable for everybody. It was Obama traveling to states like Indiana telling them, don't think those jobs that you've lost are coming back. Trump says they're going to come back. What's he going to do? Wave a magic wand. That's not how it works. That's not who we are. So for eight years, there was pent up, and I'll tell you something else that was going on. There was abject fear of the race of Barack Obama. And so you had people sidling up, crony capitalism, what have you, trying to stay close to Obama for fear of what damage he could do if he became an enemy. The market was stagnating. Obama is gone, and we have entered a brand new era of growth that is resulting from what I think is eight years of pent-up stagnation and frustration. I think people for eight years were really afraid to seriously invest. Why would they? The president was telling everybody the best days are over. The president was telling everybody that America's economic success in the past was maybe undeserved for a host of reasons, that we had stolen resources from other nations in the world, we had been unfair to certain people, corporations were unfairly wealthy while everybody else was getting poor, whatever they said, they were talking down the U.S. economy, while at the same time bragging about employment, jobs, programs, any number of things. But what is happening now, she's right, even though she hated to admit it, The pronounced economic uptick in activity since the election is almost unprecedented. And I'm telling you that I believe it's the result of eight years of pent-up frustration and fear. Whatever we had going on in the last eight years, it was not an atmosphere conducive to investment and business overall. If you were an Obama-selected business, like Google, various outfits in Silicon Valley, General Electric, then yeah, everything was great. But if you were on the enemies list, if you happened to be a Walmart or if you happened to be a big pharma, you happened to be big oil, I guarantee you, you were in that administration's crosshairs. Look at what fracking alone has meant. Getting rid of the restrictions on drilling horizontally for oil. Look at what has happened in our energy sector, exactly as Trump forecast and predicted that he would accomplish, making us the United States an energy leader. Now, all these pipelines have been approved and open. None of them got approved during Obama's administration because of the fear there could be great damage to climate change if there were any leaks or spills, as we know they happened with pipelines, blah, 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 blah. So I think that, you know, and people are trying to say another thing, that this year is kind of an outlier, that this is phony. You know, it's built on balsa wood. It's a very, very fragile foundation. And the bottom could drop out of this economy at any moment. The bottom could drop out of the stock market at any moment. Because, of course, this isn't really real. Because it's too good to be real. It's happening when the Democrats are not in power. It can't be real. And I think it's the exact opposite. I think this is the beginning of a boom. I said this last week. I said it last month. I think the economy is just now beginning to kick in. And in February, when these tax cuts actually begin to happen, you couple the bonuses people are getting with the fact that 85% of the American people are going to have more take-home pay every paycheck. So the bonuses are, are large enough they're going to keep a lot more of it than they otherwise would. The Washington Free Beacon put together a great two-and-a-half-minute video of every drive-by analyst you can think of saying that tax cuts wouldn't work, juxtaposed with, 
yet another example of an American business bonusing, raising, expanding benefits. We'll take a break, and I'll get to that after the break. But here's just one bit of evidence. Fred Smith, who was the the founder-creator FedEx, he was on Fox Business Network today. FedEx is a $65 billion company. FedEx, 13 million shipments per day. They have an airline of 650 airplanes. They don't move people, they move cargo. FedEx has 5,000 facilities and 150,000 vehicles and a half million employees in 220 countries. And Fred Smith, the founder CEO of FedEx, said the necessary thing for them to grow, to take the risk out of expanding, is this new tax policy. This new tax policy, the corporate tax rate reduction is the key to take the risk out of expanding. He said to expect some announcements from FedEx next week on what they're planning for the tax cuts. I remember there was a strike. This I don't know how many years ago, 10 years ago maybe. The years run together. But there was a, a strike, UPS. UPS is is much bigger than FedEx. You, the, 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 these numbers of FedEx for an American startup, those are phenomenal numbers. But UPS is just, it's, 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 it's much larger. But they were going through a strike. And FedEx had to say, we can't handle, we cannot handle much of the UPS overload. And I thought, this is really strange. This, to me, would be a golden opportunity. Here, your competitors on strike. You have a chance to get customers that you otherwise wouldn't get, give them great service. But they didn't feel like making the investment for more airplanes, giving more routes, more vans to deliver. And that's what Fred Smith is saying now. Now, with this massive tax rate reduction, they are going to probably institute a whole lot of expansion as plans and bonuses to the employees. But it's now, we're over 100 companies, and they're all using money from what would otherwise be sent to Washington via taxes. They're not taking money from the profit line to pay these bonuses. Let's go to top here. Audio soundbite number one. I got time to squeeze one of these things in. Uh, What happened was that the people at the Washington Free Beacon put together a montage. Of course, these montage ideas began right here on the EIB network and on Rush the TV show. And they are very effective. The Washington Free Beacon posted a montage. Media wages will not increase because of tax reform. This is when the media was lying to everybody about how the tax reform bill would not amount to anything for you because it was only for corporations and it was impossible for people to benefit when corporations got a tax cut. It's a two and a half minute bite, but I knew I'd not have two and a half minutes solid to go through it. So Cookie cut it into three segments for me. Here's the first one, 37 seconds. We're going to have Katie Turr, NBC, Andrew Royce, uh, Ross Sorkin from wherever, Ali Velshi, who may be one of the biggest ignoramuses on economics or anything else in the media. I think he's at CNBC now, used to be over, no, he's at MS, MSNBC, used to be at CNN. Looks like Mr. Clean with glasses. And we've got Stephanie Rule and other, here's, here's just a sample of what this sounds like. It feels like you're relying on this tax cut uh, of the corporations, of the wealthy, to trickle down. Yeah, Southwest and American Airlines, both announcing they're going to give $1,000 bonuses to employees following the tax overhaul. Wage increases don't follow tax cuts like this. So the world's largest retailer giving its U.S. employees a bonus, a wage increase, and expanded maternity and parental leave. So you're creating a huge tax cut Right. And you might not get wage growth. Right. Capital One Financial, which just confirmed to CNBC that they will raise the minimum wage for all U.S.-based employees at Capital One to $15 per hour. Despite what these experts in the media are saying, this is impossible. It never happens. 
We have time for one more example. Remember, we have a two and a half minute bite. This is the second segment. This runs a little shy of a minute. And anybody who thinks that stop this the tape, stop 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 the tape, please cue it back. This is Steve Smith, the guy who ran the McCain campaign. The first guy you hear here, Steve Smith, the guy who ran the McCain campaign. That should tell you something. And anybody who thinks that this corporate tax cut is going to trickle down to lift wages has a staggering ignorance of how public companies function. Wells Fargo said it would raise its minimum wage to $15 per hour. That the day we cut the corporate tax rate, you know, wages are going to suddenly jump up when there's absolutely no historical evidence whatsoever that this will happen. Boeing announced $300 million in investments for corporate giving and workplace improvements. I'll ask you plainly, are you living in a fantasy world? AT&T announced that it will invest a billion dollars in the U.S. in 2018. Also, for 200,000 workers, it will provide them a $1,000 bonus. That is, how do I say this nicely, absolute nonsense. There are no examples anywhere of companies distributing their tax savings to their workers. Sinclair Broadcasting and Kansas City Southern are among others committing to bonuses. That last guy was Ali Velshi. There's no examples anywhere of companies distributing tax savings to their workers. Bruce Bartlett, the former conservative, don't know what happened to him. The day we cut the corporate tax rate, wages are going to suddenly jump up when there's absolutely no historical evidence whatsoever it'll happen. It's right in front of your face, Bruce and Allie. And all the rest of you will be back after this. It's the fastest three hours in media. And the proof of this is the two of them are already over with.